Good morning. Good morning. Some of you may know, but for those that don't, uh, Reverend Kathy is taking some vacation time, so she won't be joining us today. Welcome to the Unity North Spiritual Center. My name is Howard Grinsell. I'll be your worship assistant today. Unity North is, is an inclusive community, and we welcome and accept all people. We're part of a larger worldwide unity movement founded by Charles and Myrtle Fillmore as a result of their personal healing. We are the publishers of the Daily Word magazine and have been holding prayer vigils for over 134 years through the prayer ministry silent unity. So prayer is the heart and soul of unity. Today's team is our prayer chaplain Nancy Helvig, music provided by Bill Mann, and Reverend Barbara Winter Martin is here again. She's visited us a few times filling in for Reverend Kathy. She'll be sharing the meditation and present the lesson love and we are the face of God. And of course, Bill's music and Reverend Barb's message would sound quite different for us and for those online, if not for the production team. Today we are in the capable hands of Brandy McLaughlin and Nancy Helvig and waiting in the wings and hoping he can stay there. <laughs> the Yoda of all things technical, Chris Italiano. Let's give him a big hand. Please join me in the mission and vision statement. Green there. Oh. Vision statement? Out of the wings. <laughs> out of the wings, Chris. Out of the wings. <laughs> vision statement. Centered in prayer, we create for all a world of love, harmony, and abundance. Celebrating spirit, exploring truths, awakening hearts, inspiring dreams, serving community. Love is everywhere, I see it, you are all that you can be, go on and be it, life is free, I believe. Open your eyes to the joy and pain Life is the fruit of your own creation Every new birth is a soul we gain Love is everywhere, I see it You are all that you can be Go on and be it, life is perfect I believe it, come and play the game for me Drinking my life from a silver fountain Sweet water running to the so cold salt sea Welcome, now let's greet each other and take a moment to acknowledge each other. For those online, if you'd like to unmute and say hello if it's your first time online with us today and tell us how you found us. Any new names there? Like there's somebody joining us from Kuwait City, Sadie. Did uh, undo her video, but it's it's classified. There she is. There she is. 
Is there anyone here that's visiting us for the first time? And if you'd like to just you know, raise your hand and tell us who you are and how you found us, we can welcome you. Welcome back. <laughs> we are all blessed by each other's presence, and we are right here, right now. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, or the bears in the room. For those of you unfamiliar, we've been collecting, uh, distributing bears uh, for years. years. Yeah. 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 So why are they here? Well, they are here to be filled with the divine love flowing from everyone in this room and online. Hold them or just connect hand to paw, make sure there's not a bear sitting idly alone. I know this is unfair and as difficult as it may be, but please don't throw them in the air and go wee during the service. Uh, rub noses and if, don't attempt to leave the premises. That would make the other bears jealous and we wouldn't want that. So. But simply feel the love flowing between you and them. And later I will explain more why they're here. Help you better understand for those that are a little unfamiliar. As mentioned, prayer is the, at the heart of unity. We can pray with words and thoughts, acts of service. We can simply pray by breathing with intention. All are forms of prayer. Please join me now in prayer as we begin, and if you wish, you may close your eyes, slow down your breathing, and become calm and still. If I'm feeling uncertain or conflicted, I take it as a sign to move my focus from the thoughts of my mind to the wisdom of my heart. Being from our head to our heart, Take another slow, deep, centering breath, breathing in with your entire body. As we inhale, feel the peace, love, and joy within. As we breathe out, gently release stress, worry, and doubt. From our heart, we offer prayers to and for whomever and whatever needs healing, be it physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. We pray for the entire community, our building and property, for those still in war-torn countries. And we pray for ourselves and each other. A couple of prayer requests today. From Noel Levine, whose prayer request is for his grandson, Landon. Landon made a, an emergency journey to Children's Hospital Saturday morning with some serious complications from a previous challenge. So we ask for prayers for the caretakers and family as he receives the best possible care and love. Randy asks us to pray for Jackson, who is the son of a, the cleaning lady here at Unity, Sarah. Jackson tore a ligament in or by his knee. We ask prayers for his healing. As we continue to breathe with intention, we release these prayers in silence. We are all healed and strong, healthy and whole, in our body 
and in our soul. We give thanks in advance for answered prayers, and we say thank you, God, and so it is. Let us stay centered for today's daily word. Daily word is comforted. I am comforted by the divine presence within me. I am grateful for the people who have understood how to comfort me when I was feeling down. They listened when I needed to talk and blessed me with their kindness. Often, they didn't need to say a word or do anything more than be with me for a while. Their understanding presence was what I really needed. Even if I am without the comforting presence of another, I can find comfort in the divine presence within me. As I open my heart to God, I feel understood, loved, and accepted completely just as I am. I need not feel self-conscious about needing comfort or how I express my feelings. I need only feel the unconditional love of God. As my trust in the divine presence grows, my sadness diminishes. Healing peace flows through my entire being as I am comforted. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 13. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Daily word is comforted. All prepare us for meditation. I close my eyes The feeling starts I still my mind Open my heart And spirit comes With its Blessing ways touching me deep with the song it plays, feet on the ground. I spread my wings, my heart. Creation sings with all that is. I am one, revered as soul. When spirit comes. Spirit comes and just continue in this quiet space. Take a few gentle breaths. Let your chair and the floor support you completely. And if you've not done so already, you may close your eyes if you like. Know that you may choose to follow my words or you may go elsewhere. Wherever you go will be perfect. And we just give ourselves the next few minutes to be quiet and to gently let our focus rest on our heart space. And as we continue we reflect on the truth that you were born in love. You brought love with you into this time. So if there's any place where you feel less than lovable, 
Just let it come to mind now. And then create a new, gentle, compassionate thought about yourself, a true thought. I am a child of the universe and love is my true identity. I breathe that truth in and as it settles gently over my heart space, I feel a sense of peace expanding in me. I feel the peace. The love that created the universe is within you. And divine love residing within you provides you with the clarity to see the handprint of the creator in everyone and everything you experience. For true love does not come by finding the perfect person, but by learning to see and imperfect people perfectly, which means seeing through the eyes of love. You have the capacity to see love in every situation. And when you forget to love, you can simply take a breath and move back into the flow. It doesn't matter how many hundreds of times a day I forget. It only matters that I remember. My prayer is, let me remember to love. Let me express unconditional love and share it like a fountain, an overflowing fountain. For I am more love, the more love I give, the more love I have to give. Let me let go of any old beliefs that told me to hold back, to ration my love. Because love never hurts. Withholding love can. Love heals, love uplifts, love brings joy and power and peace. Love brings life and energy and enthusiasm with it. It is the catalyst that moves mountains, reunited those separated, creates new beauty, and raises the consciousness of the entire planet. Love reminds me of who I am. And from this place of love, I feel my oneness. I see beyond my body and my circumstances. I see a world just waiting for love to set it free. So if there is a circumstance in your life right now that is causing you concern, or a situation or person that can take you out of your peace, bring it to mind now. Then gently breathe and invite love to surround your thoughts and your emotions. And feel yourself relaxing into the love that is your divine nature. And then send or surround your concern with love. See the situation without judgment as spirit sees it. Remember that everything is love or a call for love. And you have the freedom to send love. Shower the people you love with love. And then shower the people who are hard to love. Be sure to include yourself. We are here to have a love affair with life. What do you love about your life? Breathe in that awareness. And think of someone in your life and take a moment now to fall in love with them. 
feel your love going out to them. Appreciate them. See them as the divine beings they are. Falling in love is a choice and you can choose to feel this good anytime. And now if you like, you can set an attention for this upcoming week starting right now to be the most wonderful week of your life. Choosing and believing makes it so. This week, starting right now, is the absolutely most wonderful week I have ever experienced. And so it is. So just take a few more minutes here to continue to gently breathe feel that life energy flowing through you all the way out to your fingers and your toes and the tip of your nose and when you are ready ever so gently you can open your eyes feeling alert yet relaxed energized yet at peace Phil, that was beautiful. I don't kind of such, do we keep the mood or do we clap? But that was lovely. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Well, I heard this story about an old Italian gentleman. He lived alone in New Jersey and he wanted to plant his annual tomato garden, but it was very difficult work as the ground was very hard. His only son, Vincent, who used to help him was in prison. The old man wrote a letter to his son and described his predicament. Dear Vincent, 
I'm feeling pretty sad because it looks like I won't be able to plant my tomato garden this year. I'm just getting too old to be digging up a garden plot. I know if you were here, my troubles would be over. I know you would be happy to dig up the plot for me like in the old days. Love, Papa. And a few days later, he received a letter from his son and said, Dear Papa, don't dig up that garden. That's where the bodies are buried. Love, Vinny. <laughs> and at 4 a.m. the next morning, FBI agents and local police arrived and dug up the entire area without finding any bodies. Uh, they apologized to the old man and left. That same day, the old man received another letter from his son. Dear Papa, go ahead and plant the tomatoes now. That's the best I could do under the circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Vinny. Yeah, I like that one. Well, you know, it, I found it was interesting. It was pointed out to me that, you know, that in the Bible, you would think you could find a lot of definitions for God, but there aren't any. There's only one place where it gives you a definition for God, and that's in John, and that's where it says God is love. That's all. And so then I was thinking about that, and I thought of what you know, Paul wrote in Corinthians, and he said, you know, if I speak in tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a you know, clanging cymbal. You know, you're just noise. You notice that when, when people are talking without love coming through? It's just noise. And he goes on to say, just to get the point even clearer, if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have all faith. That's pretty impressive, so right? And I have all the faith to remove mountains, but I have not love. I am nothing. It's kind of like, okay. So you're brilliant, or you're smart, or you're successful, or you're, you're prosperous, or all that stuff. But if you don't have love, you know, not such a big, impressive deal, he goes on to say. So I was thinking about that, because love, I think, is our most important faculty. It really is. It's, it's a divine activity. It's a cosmic force. It's one of our gifts we talk about in our 12 gifts from Godness. Um, you know, and it's the spiritual gift that's so Im incredibly important. And I wanted to share with you, this is written, if any of you have ever been to the Charles de Gaulle Airport, I have not. Oh, you have, okay. Well, on a wall there is written in black felt pen and it's been there for years and, there, and people go over it then with more pen so it will, won't go away. And this is what it reads. There's a poem on the wall, and it says, I need your hands. I live in heaven, so I have no hands to work on this earth, or no feet to run the roads, no arms to embrace the children. So I have need of you, so I have made you. With your hands, I can touch your brothers and sisters. With your eyes, I can see their souls. With your feet, I can walk and contemplate and reveal the kingdom right here on earth. With your compassion, I can heal the wounded. With your presence, I can comfort the afflicted. With your prayers, I can free troubled hearts and spirits. And with you, I can bring forth miracles. So tell me, can I count on you? And that's written on the Charles de Gaulle Airport. And I love that, because I was really talking about that we are really the face we're the voice, we're the arms of Godness. That's how Godness gets expressed, isn't it? And so how do you express your divinity? Now, there was a time when I used to say, when people would ask, I'd say, I'm a professional lover. Um, I don't say that now, because it's a little creepy. But you, know, <laughs> but you get my point here. It's that that's what I'm here to be, to be a lover. That's actually what we're probably all here to be. But probably watch who you say that to, because it can confuse them. You know, and it's and the good news is is you know to be a lover is not something you have to master. It's really just something you allow. When we express love, what we do is get out of the way and allow it to come through. And so the practice, I always like looking for spiritual practices and whatever's going on. The spiritual practice is just to make the decision to choose to allow. I can do that. I can make that decision. And then when we do that and we make up our mind to love, then we get to just see what happens when you let love do what love does, which is pretty amazing. So the allowing part is really where it comes. And we're fortunate here 
because we already know that we are love. There are people that don't know that. So they're starting sort of a disadvantage. They don't know. We talk about it all the time. We talk about our principles. God is, you know, good. We are that, you know. And so it's like we are the love. And so we have an advantage. We know that. Now, that isn't all, all we need sometimes, because I don't know about you. But besides knowing that, we have to accept it, welcome it into our being, look for places in my own psyche that say that I am less than lovable. And when I run into those, what do I do with those? It's I have to gently shift that around. So if there's any place where there's any little bit of shame left in how you're feeling about yourself, you know, we, we want to embrace that and to love that. And to, oh, you know, get rid of any old less than identities we have about ourselves. You know, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not whatever enough, you know, whatever that might be. Gently to move that on out. Do self-forgiveness. There was a wonderful article that was written by a friend of mine in the Eau Claire newspaper a ways back. It was a couple years ago. And she wrote a letter to all senior women, inviting them to forgive themselves because so many found themselves, as they were in their senior years, were not prepared financially and were struggling and were feeling shame about the fact that they hadn't planned ahead of time as well as they you know, now wish they may have, but the reality is we're always doing the best we can. And they probably did pretty good, quite honestly, with the 63 cents on the dollar that they were working in, you know, the comparison and the roles they were playing, which were a lot of caregivers and so forth, that they find themselves in their senior years struggling. And she wrote this beautiful article inviting them to reframe that and let that go and to focus on what they provided all those years to others and all the good that they did. And I thought that was beautiful to be able to reframe that. And so if there's any place where you have any kind of, you know, not feeling so good about yourselfness, it's a technical term, you know, we can just to gently release that and let it move in. So because we have to, it's easy, much easier to be an open channel for love if you are feeling loving about yourself too. And then we make a decision to, you know, to say, yes, I'm going to be that open channel. So I invite you to think about somebody you know who's very loving. Just think anybody in the world that you know that's just a wonderful, loving person. And do you notice they really don't work at it, do they? They aren't trying. They aren't efforting. It's just what they do. They just love. Because it is that easy to have it flow out. It doesn't require. You know, you don't have to do calisthenics to work up a muscle to be able to do it. It's just to let it flow. And so when I was doing that, you know, I was going to think about that myself. And I thought about my husband, Stephen, who is no longer with us in body, but still hangs around. Anyway, and I know this will shock some of you, but I could be somewhat frustrating. And <laughs> I, yeah, I know you're shocked. You know, but the thing was, as much as I could drive that guy crazy, which I managed to do, uh, you know, because we were both rather strong. We have strong opinions and strong ideas, and they didn't always match. Amazing how that can work. But the one thing that I knew is even when he was like shaking his head and leaving the room and going, oh, you know, blah, blah, and talking to himself, I knew he still loved me. I knew that. And so I could relax because he did not withhold his love. And sometimes along the way, we think that when people are unkind to us, or so you may have something in the past where you have been divorced, betrayed, or there was someone who was not, you know, help a positive person in your life, and we think what we need to do is we need to withhold love from them. Well, we may need to set boundaries. Boundaries and love, totally different things. So you can set a good boundary. But we don't have to stop loving. We don't have to do that. Because what happens if you start measuring the amount of love you give, it restricts how much is flowing to you as well and through you. So we want to not do the withhold thing. And 
I have been privileged in some of my work that I've done throughout my life. I've, I've worked with people who were imprisoned for uh, theft, for manslaughter, for uh, you know, uh, inappropriate behavior, uh, you know, all, all kinds of things. And one thing is, as I got to know them, I was able to love them all. Now, that doesn't mean I want to bring them in as roommates. And it doesn't mean that I'm not going to set some boundaries with them. But as I knew them, I could love them. I could love them right where they were at. And that was an incredible gift for me to have that experience, to know that it, love is not contingent on what somebody else is doing. It's something that we choose to just allow because that is our naturalness. And so I was thinking about that because I've got thinking about this subject. Okay, and I thought, you know, some of you are too young to remember this, but there was a time when Al Gore lost the presidency of the United States. And he lost it rather close, it was close. It had hanging chads, Florida and the Supreme Court were involved in all that, but I won't get into that. The thing was, after he, you know, said, uh, uh, whatever you do, and he said, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna be president, obviously, he was kind of in a funk. I guess I would be too, especially he'd lost his own state. Uh, um, and then so he was going, you know, you do, talk about doing the what ifs. Can't you imagine if you would lose a real close election or something, you're going, geez, if I just, well, he wouldn't have rang the doorbells, but you know, if we just done a little bit more, maybe that little bit more would have done it. And so he was kind of in that space. And I was part of a group of healers that were throughout the country, maybe even the world, I don't know, but I knew it was throughout the country. And we took on a project that we were going to send love to him and help him through this. And so I was thinking about that because I was thinking, where do I you know, withhold love now? And I don't know that I withhold love from people I know, but I found that I am withholding love from someone I don't know personally. And I thought, okay, I could change that. What would that be interesting? And I'm just going to put up this premise here. You do not have to vote for people to love them. Just, just saying. So I thought, OK, I could send love. And what would that be like? I don't know if that's going to make a big difference. But what if we, as a people, started sending love to everybody, even those that we are not fond of? Would that make a difference? I'm curious. I think that would be a fun experiment. I'd like to try that. And, and so I decided, well, if, you know, how do you try I do it for myself. Because if nothing else, it lets my love throw. Because wherever you've got to withhold, it's, it's closing that opening a little bit. So it's like, OK, I'm sending love out there. And I'm feeling more peaceful. Isn't that amazing how that happens? And I asked myself a question. And the question was, what's one thing I can do to share my love and affection more freely? I, you know, when I ask a good question, I usually get good answers. And so I had asked myself this question just a few weeks ago. And an answer instantly came to mind. And it, those of, that, that are up, up in my community where I speak regularly, up in St. Cloud, Minnesota, know that generally before services, I don't hug people. Now, I can give you lots of reasons why I had that as my guideline. Doesn't matter. But I thought, you know, that's a time when you are withholding. And some people I don't get to see afterwards, so I don't get to hug them afterwards. Well, and I thought, so Barbara, what if you let go of this rule that you had very wisely put in place, you thought, and change it and let more love flow through? And I bet there's a solution that will solve all those reasons I had for why I did not do that. And it was amazing. I could do that. I can hug everybody. But I just step out of the room for a minute, clear things up. I'm good to go. And it was like, OK, I can let more love express. And as I was on this theme, a story came to mind that I'd heard before. And this was written by a nurse. And she says, it was a busy morning at the clinic. And at approximately 8.30, an elderly gentleman arrived to have his stitches removed from his thumb. He stated that he was in a hurry as he had an appointment at 9. I took his vital signs and had him take a seat, knowing it would be over an hour before a doctor would be able to see him. I saw him look at his watch, and I decided since I was not busy with another patient at the moment, I would evaluate his wound. And on exam, it was well healed, so I talked to one of the doctors and got the needed supplies to remove his sutures and redress his wound. 
While taking care of him, we began to talk. I asked him if he had another doctor's appointment this morning as he was in such a hurry. The gentleman told me no, that he needed to go to the nursing home to eat breakfast with his wife. I then imagined er, and inquired as to her health. He told me that he, she had been there for some time and that she had Alzheimer's disease. As we talked and I finished dressing his wound, I asked if she would be worried if he were a bit late. She replied that he replied that she no longer knew who he was and that she had not recognized him in five years now. I was surprised and asked him, are you still, and you still go every morning even though she doesn't know who you are? He smiled and he patted my hand and said, she doesn't know who I am, but I still know who she is. I had to hold back tears as he left and had goosebumps on my arms as I thought, that is the kind of love I want in my life. Because true love may not be romantic, it may not be physical. But true love is an acceptance of all that is, all that has been, all that will be, and all that will not be. And I loved that definition. And so I had been thinking about this, and I had been planning, you know, uh, to, when, I, when I'm preparing a talk, I'm kind of living it that week, and so it was like, okay, I'm going to be an open conduit for love as best I can. And I was, and that week there was a concert up in St. Cloud at Lake George. They had these big outdoor concerts, and it was, uh, the, oh, it was a Doobie Brothers and Eagles uh, tribute concert with thousands of people and Collective Unconscious and oh, whoever the other band was. Sorry. Anyway, it was great. But I, you know, the band, the the early acts gets there. It starts at 5:30. I arrive at two, because for one thing is then I. Why would you not want to go sit under a tree, read a book around a lake while people are, you know, practicing their music? It's lovely. So I get there while well, nobody else is there. I lay out my tarp for my friends who actually work for a living and will have to come later, you know, closer to the time it starts. And, and I'm sitting there reading my book. And after a while, another woman shows up. And She's laying her tarps and her stuff, you know, for all of her entourage next to mine. She's about 20 feet away from me. Now, I'm an introvert, and I'm thinking, I can just keep reading my book. I'm having a good time. But there's another human being 20 feet over that way. We're the only people right now in this section of the entire park. <sighs> Barbara, you are, you know, you are the ears and the, you know, whatever of Godness. So, okay. So I looked over and I just said, hi. And just comment. She was not an introvert, so she immediately came over <laughs> and, and started talking with me. And, sure, and as I listened to her, and I was in that intention of being just present, and she told me about her family. She told me about a new diagnosis that she had just got, uh, which she read online before they were able to call her and tell her what, about what it was. And she told me about she probably shouldn't be driving because of this new diagnosis. Show me how her family were feeling. Tell me where she worked. Tell me about her her craft project, which she's trying to turn into a business, and but it's not going well. And she chatted and, and, and went on a little bit, and then she said, you know, I, I need to go and get some sandwiches to have, you know, for my entourage. I said, well, fine, we'll see you later. And she left, and it was like effortless on my part. And I don't think I ever said. You know, I did ahas and a few hums, you know, but, but I, you know, she didn't ask me anything about me and I didn't feel a need to say anything about whose or was that I am. It was lovely. And she came back about, about an hour later and she brought me a gift. She says, here, this is for you. You were so wonderful. And she gave me one of her craft projects that she's trying to sell. And I went, well, thank you. How lovely. And she thanked me for listening. And it was like, yeah. It's easy to be the ears of God, is it not? I didn't have to do a thing. And so the, con the concert went on, and it was great. And then at some point in the concert, because I have been there since 2 o'clock, I had to line up in line for the porta potties, you know? How oh, that is, glamorous stuff. Anyways, and there's a dozen of them, you know, there. And then there are lines, you know, and they're, you know, 10 people deep. And as I'm in line, in one of the lines, it's like, okay, Still an inter you know, you know, I know how to do these lines. Just look at the ground. We're all here for the same purpose, but we don't have to think about it. And so, you know, we're all standing like, and I thought, no, you could actually look up and 
really recognize another human divine being next to you. And I did that and I looked and this gentleman, and he was, um, well, he was very tall. He was like 6'6", six, because six. I remember thinking, because he was using a walker, and I, and I, my mind immediately went, I wonder if they make tall walkers, because, you know, you'd have to be able to have them for taller people. This, my, was, you know, I'm very deep sometimes. And so I'm <laughs> looking and thinking about that, but I looked at him, and I thought, you know, and then, and then he started talking to me, and he shared with me about what his uh, reason for the walker was, and that's a chronic condition for him. And he shared that he was 60 years old, and, and then he got a new diagnosis, um, and it involved plumbing. And I'm going, okay, you know, that's fine. I, I, I'm good. Tell me all about it. And he did. In however long it took to get, you know, eight people up to the front, you know, and so I don't know how long that time was, but it was a delightful conversation where I realized I'm just the eyes of God. I'm just looking at you and allowing you to speak to another human being and connect with somebody else. And it was fabulous. It was like, oh, this feels so darn good. I loved it. And so that closed that out, and then I'm getting ready to, um, anyway, I get a text like 11 o'clock at night, same night when I get home. And it's from a friend of mine in, um, but she's out in California. And she said, you know, just, re well, you would guess that because she's saying just returning from whale watching. She's probably not in Minnesota. Um, anyway, and, and she was saying, you know, and I had, she said, I heard this voice in my head that said, help him. And she says, I was thinking, oh, who does that mean? And she had somebody in mind in, in her, that she works with. It. Oh, I'm, I'm supposed to probably help that person. Good. But then she stopped for gas, and she went to the gas station, and there was a man there who you know, asked her for a dollar because he was trying to collect a dollar from each person so he could fill his tank. And she said, I had no cash. She said, so then it dawned on me, but I've got a credit card. She goes, so I told him, fill your tank. And she used her credit card to pay for his tank of gas. And, she, and then she said, I felt so good. And then... She said, I felt honored to have been able to do that. And that's the feeling that I realized I'd had that day. Every time someone talked to me, I felt honored to be there, to be the witness, to be the, ex to be the recipient, to be the expression, to be the eyes, whatever it is. And it was like, I want more of that. And the good news, it's easy. All I have to do is just remember to allow, <coughs> set my intention, and then just go for the most wonderful ride as I watch love do what love does when we set it free. So I invite you this week, if you like, to just set an intention to let love do what love does and see how it impacts you. My guess is you're going to have surprise and delight. And so it is.
sometimes that's real easy, sometimes not. Sometimes life just don't work out the way we thought. But when trouble's got you running, your dreams are torn apart. There's an answer right inside of you. It's where the whole thing starts. So give a little love from the bottom of the heart. If you want to make a friend of someone, that's where you start. Just give a little love from the bottom of the heart. You want to make a friend of someone, that's where you start. Inside of you, let it be true. From the bottom of the heart, give a little love down inside of you. Let it ring. Just a reminder, if you, uh, the services, the music, and the message is online. Uh, shortly, it'll be on the YouTube channel if you wanted to watch it again at home and so you can weep privately at the breakfast story. <laughs> now it is time to bless our offerings. We bless those who are able to share their resources and abundance with monetary donations. For those who give of their time caring for the building helping with family table, teaching the children. We give thanks for those who bless us with their presence online and in person, and for all who support us with prayers. And we give thanks for being a part in the blessing of these teddy bears. So here's the story for those that aren't familiar. We've been collecting blessing and sending out into the community magic teddy bears you are now able to hug them and, and, and rub their noses. Please don't throw them. Uh, that's why we didn't give Nancy one. <laughs> <laughs> As I said earlier, they are, the bears are here being filled with the divine love flowing through all of us online and here in this room. And because of you all, they are now filled with love and purpose. After the service today, Kathleen We'll be bringing these, some to the Coon Rapids Fire Department and some to the Alexandra House, which is a women and children's shelter for victims of domestic and physical abuse, as well as some other places uh, who have a need for magic teddy bears to bring healing, comfort, and hope to those children who uh, desperately might need it and something as, as simple as a bear might just do that for us. So keep sending them their love until they're, don't burst their seams, that would be um, not good. But it is not one kind of offering rather than a blending of all these gifts that make us Unity North Spiritual Center. So join me together. Divine love flowing through me now blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive, and I am grateful. My gift flows forth on the wings of love, and it lands where it can heal and bless. It returns to me. Multiplied a thousandfold, and the universe says yes, yes, and the universe says yes. We have some community news. There's a lot to unpack here, so I'll try to be as efficient as I can. So the prayer chaplain today is Nancy Helvig. Today's healing facilitator is Tara Kolbeck. You're not sure who she is. She's right over there. Uh, there's a schedule change in the men's group uh, facilitated by Noel. The next meeting will be October 26th. We have some good news. Youth and Family Ministry has immediate openings for two to three volunteers to share their talents in the nursery and with the youth ministry. 
Now the bad news is you'll only be able to be involved one Sunday a month or less. <laughs> I suggest you corner Maura or Kathleen right after service before all the slots are filled. <laughs> Time to shine bright for the annual holiday auction. Uh, those familiar with this, and if you're not familiar with it, please, you know, we can talk about this and get somebody that's done it before and they can explain a little bit more. Uh, you'll be able to list your, don uh, those that have done it, you'll be able to list your donations online uh, beginning October 1st through the whole month of October. Now, for those that, uh, again, have a little experience with it or none at all, uh, some of the gifts and donations that they, you put online, uh, it's a fundraiser for the church, and then people bid on them. Uh, it included gift cards, health and wellness services, tutorials, parties, uh, tickets for plays and theater, gift cards for dinner, uh, etc. So the bidding will start November 10th and run through December 8th. Um, we envision this important fundraising auction to provide, you know, hopefully over a couple thousand dollars to re help pay for the replacement of the four parking lot lights that are uh, sorely in need of, of some work there. It will make our property shine bright and be safer at night. Uh, there'll be an email coming with more information. Thank you to all who assisted with the out-of-state congregants, Rebecca Thompson and Finn Robertson last week. It was a great visit. Party number 12, Egypt and the Afterlife with Reverend Kathy and Becky Oberlin. It'll be Friday, November 1st. There's still one ticket left. The next, uh, please join us October 20th to expand your consciousness with others. A prayer and healing gathering for a peaceful election, transfer of power, and inauguration. The healing facilitators and prayer chaplains will walk us through prayer and meditation and healing, and we will bless these upcoming threshold events and see the highest and best outcome for all. There is a sign-up sheet in the lobby. It's not necessary, but it kind of helps us prepare. Unity and Creation Spirituality. This is a four-week Sunday lesson. And for those that have done this before, you, you know it's a... Uh, uh, Reverend Kathleen will give the le lesson on Sunday and then the follow-up class on Wednesday, and that'll run for four weeks. So it'll be lesson here on Sunday, class on Wednesday. Um, there's a lot to unpack here, so I'll just give you some of the highlights. Uh, the Wednesday class is also on Zoom, if I didn't men mention that. So this tradition was founded by Matthew Fox. Um, he ignited an international movement, awakening people to honor and defend the earth and work for justice. Both unity and cre creation spirituality teach that we are born in original blessing, and each one of us seeks to discover our true self, the Christ within which is the cosmic blueprint of wholeness in life, the perfect idea in all of creation. The creation spirituality is a fourfold path. There's blessing and awe one week, mystery and silence, creativity and birth, transformation and joy. To register for the Wednesday classes, no need to register, just show up on Sundays. You can find more information about that program and all the other programs mentioned here online. Um, so lastly, um, I believe most would agree, myself being one of them, that the classes at Unity that we've done over the years are thought-provoking, unique, and at least for me, instilled a curiosity about a path that I may have not yet taken. But don't take my word for it, or anyone else's really. Sign up, register, show up, and decide for yourself. And I think as far as the bears go, we'll just uh, leave them uh, where they are, I believe, and Kathleen will collect those. Please join me in the affirmation prayer. We are grateful for our youth and family ministry, our children, parents, director, teachers, and our teachings. In prayerful intention, we see and give thanks for an immediate continued increase of children, families, and teachers. And so it is. Please stand for the prayer for protection. Together, the light of God surrounds me. 
I am the light of God. The love of gold enfolds me. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And Bill will take us home with the peace song. Is there anybody online who would like to share anything or 